Buongiorno. Hello. Welcome to Angela's Kitchen. I'm Angela and this is my kitchen. Today we're going to prepare eggs in three different ways. The first will be uova in purgatorio, which means eggs in purgatory. Then we will be preparing frittata di salsiccia, which is a sausage omelet. And then we will also be preparing another omelet called frittata di patate, which is a potato omelet. First, we're going to prepare our uova in purgatorio, or eggs in purgatory. We will need a 12-inch skillet, and then a large spoon, if you don't have one this large, you can use a serving spoon to scoop out the eggs to serve, a wooden spoon for stirring. The ingredients that we will need are one quarter of a cup of olive oil. This is one red bell pepper. Then we have a green bell pepper. Notice they're sliced in strips. This is a bunch of fresh spring onions, or scallions as they're called, uh, which would be maybe about five scallions. However, if you don't have scallions, a medium onion would do as well, and you would mince the onion. This is a one pound can of plum tomatoes, which I have cut in coarse pieces. Now, as you know, the plum tomatoes are the little oval-shaped Italian tomatoes, which are really nicer than the round ones in cooking. This is about a, tea, a tablespoon of fresh parsley. If you're not using fresh parsley, using dry parsley, remember just a half a teaspoon would be enough. This again is about three leaves or a tablespoon of fresh basil. A half a teaspoon of dry basil is all you'd need if you're using dry. Then we have six rounds of ham. You can use prosciutto. I chose ham because this is more readily available to you. However, if you can get prosciutto, which is the Italian ham, something like Smithfield, but not quite the same, that is also very nice. Salt and pepper to taste. and six eggs. All right, will you join me at the stove now? All right, now we're going to be putting the quarter of a cup of olive oil into our 12-inch skillet. Turn the heat to on high. And as soon as it becomes aromatic or it starts moving in the pan, we'll add our peppers. Now, while we're waiting for that to happen, what I've done here is left part of my pepper. You'll find this in the red pepper as well. We remove all of the seeds, but on the uh, certain sections of the uh, pepper will be this web-like affair. Remove all of that. When that cooks, it becomes bitter. So we'll remove that, toss it away, and I'll continue slicing our pepper like so. Our oil is beginning to move in the pan. We'll just give it five or six seconds more to get good and hot, but not hot enough to burn our peppers. The oil is now aromatic. It's moving around in the pan. If you notice, if I do this, it'll move away. It's time to add our peppers. and our scallions or medium-sized onion, if that's what you have. At this point, we're going to lower our heat to between medium and medium-high. Add salt and pepper to taste. Check to see that it is not too high. Keep moving your peppers so they don't turn 
brown. We don't want them to fry. We want them to become glazed. At this point, we will cover it with a lid. And we've got it between medium and medium high. We're going to check this in about five minutes. However, during that period of time, if you like, you can continue turning them to make sure that those that are in the center are then moved to the outer perimeter of the frying pan so that it'll give a chance for those that are on the outer edge to become cooked as well. We'll be back in about five minutes. All right, there's our buzzer. Five minutes are up. Our peppers are nicely glazed, as are the, uh, the scallions. At this point, we raise the heat to high. Add our one pound can of tomato with its juices. Let it come to a boil again. Once it comes to a boil, then we'll lower it and simmer it for about 10 minutes. Uncovered. Now that should boil pretty fast. And that's starting to make the sound already. Isn't that pretty? Have your red peppers and your scallions and your green peppers. And then you see what we do with our eggs so they look as though they're in purgatory. They're neither here nor there. They're kind of floating around. Now you see it boiling now? All right, we don't want it to boil too rapidly. So at this point, we'll lower it to between medium and medium high. And again, stir from time to time transferring the peppers that are on the outer edge of your pan to the center so that, that they all cook evenly. We're going to time this for about 10 minutes just to give the tomatoes a chance to cook through. And at that time, we will add our eggs. Hi, right, and there's our buzzer. At this point, we're going to add our fresh parsley and fresh basil. Bear in mind that if you're using dry parsley and dry basil, add it at the time that you add the tomatoes to give it a chance to reconstitute itself. But with the fresh basil and fresh parsley, we add it at the end of the tomato cooking time. Give this a nice stir. And at this point, you might want to taste to see if it's salty enough for you. Always under salt. You can always add salt. You can't take it out. All right, now, we don't need any cooking time for our parsley and basil. We're going to take our ham now and set them like little nests. After all, if our eggs are going to be in purgatory, you want them to be on a nice fleecy cloud, right? And in each of the nests, we're going to put an egg. One in the center. And another one on the side here. Set it in. And put a little bit of the sauce in each one, like so. Then we get our eggs. And we're going to break them into the little nests. Two. 
Okay. Six. All right, now is the time to cover this. All right, now we're going to add a little salt on each of the eggs and a turn with the black pepper on each of the eggs as well. Then it's going to be covered so that the eggs can steam. We'll give it three minutes and then check. Well, they look they look nicely done, except that this one here is still a little soft. So what we do then is just give it another half minute or so. Now these were extra large eggs. Usually three minutes should be enough for them to set. So if you're using large eggs or medium eggs, three minutes is more than sufficient. Okay, here we have our vulva in purgatorio, or eggs in purgatorio. You see they're kind of floating around. And the reason I use a large spoon is because it's easier to pick it up. You could use a spatula as well. Now you've picked up the ham as well as the, uh, the egg. And we're going to give some of that sauce here to each portion. Take your bread, pull it apart, and dip. And buon appetito. All right, next we're going to be making a frittata di salsiccia, uh, which is a, uh, a sausage omelet. This is very simple to make and very delicious. Now, you know what Italian sausage looks like. They come in links. Well, I've cut each link into four pieces. They're about a half inch, maybe an inch long. We will need a 10-inch pan. Make sure that it's not the straight-edged skillet, but that it has the curved edges, because this omelet is going to be flipped onto a plate. And we will need a lid for that. Here we have, this was th four scallions actually, but if you have three large scallions, four scallions, if you want to use five, if you like the taste, fine. But this is four scallions that I have chopped. I am using one quarter of a teaspoon of fennel. And you can get that in your uh, spice rack. Fennel is a seed that has kind of a, um, if you know finocchio, uh, it's where it comes from, but it has kind of a licorice -y taste, but not an overpowering licorice -y taste. It's what we usually put in sausage when it's homemade. Italian sausage always has fennel. This does not, so I'm adding it. Then we will need eight large eggs and, of course, your salt and pepper to taste. You will notice that I'm not adding oil to any of this because the sausage will render its oil. We'll add also a quarter of a cup of water to the skillet in order to make sure that all of the pork is properly steamed. Okay, let's go to the stove now. Right, the heat is on high. I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of cold water to the skillet and we're going to wait until that boils, which should not take any time at all. Once it boils, we'll add our sausage. All right, that water is now boiling. You can see it and hear it. I'm going to add the sausage. And you can do that all at once. And once you've got it in the pan, of course, spread it around so that each sausage will get the benefit of the water. And you'll find that they're going to turn gray as the sausage steams. Once the water has evaporated, we're going to lower our heat to medium high and the sausage will cook for about 15 minutes to make sure that the pork is thoroughly cooked. Of course, at one time, we were worried about trichinosis, weren't we? I don't think we have to worry about that now, but still, we want our pork nicely cooked. You see they're turning gray. That water is all going to evaporate and then the 
fat will be rendered into the pan, which we will use for the omelet, or frittata, as we say in Italian. Some of these on this side here, pink ones. There we are. Now we don't want to leave this on high once the water is evaporated because it'll just burn on the outside and not cook on the inside. So now that the all of the sausage has been steamed through, the water is mostly evaporated. Okay. I am going to lower this to medium high. However, once it has been lowered to medium high. If I feel that it's cooking too rapidly, I'm going to lower it again to medium. This will take about 15 minutes cooking time. Right. Our 15 minutes are up, and you notice the sausage is nicely browned. However, I kept checking it and of course turning it during that 15 minute time, and I lowered it to, on my stove, low, so that it just would simmer very gently. At this point, we add the scallions, the fresh scallions. I, as I said, there were four scallions that I had, plus the tops. I used the greens. Now, we just want these to get limp and glazed a little bit. That'll take about two minutes. Raise the heat just a little bit to bring it up to about a medium. At this time, we also add our quarter of a teaspoon of fennel and mix throughout so that it's evenly distributed. Now, as soon as you see that your onion has glazed in about, as I say, about two minutes, a minute and a half, two minutes, and we'll leave that like that. In the meantime, we'll go to the eggs and we'll put salt and pepper to taste. Not too much salt because the uh, sausage is salty. Uh, so let's put, there are eight eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And same with the pepper. Two, three, four, half again as much of the pepper. Now I'll take my wire whip and just beat them slightly. They do not need to be creamy or frothy or anything like that. Just mix the yolk with the egg, and that'll certainly be enough. Okay. You see, that was fast, wasn't it? Let's check the scallions. All right, they're doing nicely. At this point, we're going to add, let's make sure the scallions are nicely distributed. That looks good. We're going to add the egg. What we do now is we keep it between medium and medium high and we're going to cover it. And we're going to give it about five minutes time. However, Depending upon the size of your pan and the size of your eggs, you're going to see if it's set sooner, you're going to uh, stop the cooking time, and I'll show you what set means. If it takes a little longer to set, we'll give it a little more time. But generally, I would say for a 10-inch skillet and eight uh, eggs, uh, we would need about five minutes time with the lid. And I'm going to time. There's the buzzer. Okay, let's see what's going on under here. It's set all around the sides. It's not set in the center. Now you can do one of two things. Either open it in the center so that the, the softened egg will go to the center, but it really doesn't matter. This is certainly sufficiently set for me to flip it. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do now. This is a warmed platter. And if you'll join me at the sink, we're going to flip our omelet. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now what I do is reset it in the pan so that the 
the egg that was not set will set back on the stove and we have it down to just low. We don't want to cook this anymore. We just want it to set. Time that for one minute. If you want to time it on the timer, fine, but you can just about guess. But we'll do that just for today. We'll time it for one minute and then our omelet will be ready. The minute is up. Turn off our heat. Uncover our omelet. And just move it on to the plate. And this will cut into very nice portions, about six, or you could even make eight portions. Allora, frittata di salsiccia. This is your sausage omelet. Our third egg dish today will be frittata di patate, which is a potato omelet. And again, we will need a 10-inch skillet with the rounded sides and a cover, four tablespoons of olive oil, one large potato diced, and you see how small those pieces are, a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika, one half green bell pepper diced. Again, look at the pieces. They're quite small. The same with a red bell pepper, diced. Now let me show you. The green pepper is getting riper, and this is the ripened version of the green pepper. It's not another variety, it's the same pepper. This is a bunch of scallions with its tops, diced. Eight eggs, don't use the jumbo, medium or large will do fine. One tablespoon of parsley, which I will immediately put into my egg right now one tablespoon of basil and if you can't find fresh basil you can use one half teaspoon dried i'm not giving you the option to use dried ba uh, dried parsley because that's very easily found in our supermarkets this is basil as it looks when it's taken right off the plant salt and pepper to taste into the egg which i will do right now all right would you join me at the stove raising the heat to high we put in our four tablespoons of olive oil. And as soon as the oil becomes aromatic or starts dancing in the pan, we'll know that it's time to add our diced potato and paprika. All right, our oil is ready. You hear it? We're going to add our potatoes. And the paprika. Our heat from for now will be medium high, quarter of a teaspoon of paprika. Be surprised what a nice flavor paprika lends to this dish. Just make sure that you've got it all around. Now we'll give these potatoes five minutes before we add our other ingredients. Remembering we have the heat on medium high. I'm going to put the timer on for five minutes and during that period of time I will of course be turning them and if you have a hot spot on your stove in your burner let's say here make sure that they all kind of hit that section. Five minutes time. All right five minutes are up. I'm now going to salt and pepper to taste. Give it a twirl and add the green. Let's get all of that stuff. The red and my scallions. And again, give this five minutes and I'll keep stirring it as we wait for that five minutes to be up. Isn't that a pretty color combination? Of course, if you can't get red pepper, you know, don't worry about it. Don't not make the recipe because you don't have red pepper. Use one whole green pepper instead of half of a red and half of, half of a green. The red, of course, is a sweeter flavor 
the green will do as well. Okay, I've timed it. And we'll see what happens in five minutes time. Let's turn off the buzzer. We're now going to lower the heat from medium high to medium low. And while we're doing that, again, we're going to whip our eggs. You can use a fork too, because we really don't have to whip it such a froth if you don't have a wire whisk. And that should be enough. What you might want to do at this point is taste one of the peppers or scallions and see if you need to adjust your salting upward. It's always better not to salt in too much because you can always add salt. If you like it saltier than this, we've only added a little bit of, very little bit of uh, salt to the potatoes. So at this point, taste your pepper and if it's not salty enough, you can add some more salt. All right, I'm adding the eggs. It's on medium low, as I said. We're going to make sure that all of our veggies are all over. There we go. I'm going to cover this. You see it's already starting to, to set. I'm going to time this for five minutes. Cover it. Checking it for time, from time to time, make sure that it's not, the heat is not too high because we do not want the omelet to burn underneath. We want a lovely golden color. We've come along about four minutes. I'm going to uncover this. And as you notice, some of the center is still soft. So what we do is this. Get your softened egg to the edges of the pan. Can you see that? here, there, and everywhere. And then cover it. We've got about another minute to go on this, and by that time, even if the center is soft, it doesn't matter, because when I flip it, you'll see what happens. Our five minutes are up. Notice the center is still a little unset, but that's okay. What we do now is put the platter on, pan, turn it over this way. What we do is put it back into the pan so that the section that was not cooked, the center, is going to set. We only give this one more minute on low as well. Just one minute, no longer. And it is up. Uncover our frittata and just slide it like so onto your plate. And this is your frittata di patate. Ecco. Allora, now we have our uova in purgatorio, which are our eggs in purgatory. Here we have our frittata di salsiccia, which is your sausage omelet with scallions, and here we have our frittata di patate with red and green bell peppers and scallions, and these are your three egg dishes. Allora, buon appetito e alla prossima volta. I hope to see you in future tapes. We will be doing a variety of things, hors d'oeuvres, desserts, um, meats, uh, fish. Just join us. We'd love to see you again. I really would like to see you. Nice being with you.